In this course, I'm going to show you the process in which I take a scene that looks like this and turn it into this. And it really is a structured process. I'm not just throwing spaghetti at the wall. There is a specific set of steps that I go through in order to achieve these results. And in this intro video, I just want to introduce you to this process so that you can follow along the course and understand what is happening. The first step is to gather as many references as you can and spend some time carefully analyzing and observing the references. Look for details, make sure you understand the materials, what they are and how they are made. And it's really important to carefully observe your references because what you will be doing is to create specific materials. These specific materials that you see in the references, not just generic ones. And so what I mean by that is that when I look at the references for the M6 camera, I'm not going to recreate a generic metal or a generic leather. I am going to try and recreate the specific metals and the specific leather that I'm seeing in the references. And that is one of the fundamental parts of this process. You create specific materials, not generic ones. And that means that often you're going to need to find creative ways to go about this. And that's because the techniques that you're going to need to come up with to recreate these specific materials might not be a Google search away. You might need to figure them out for yourself. And that's something that you'll see me do in this course when I create the leather and also when I create the nickel, for example, on the strap holders. So you'll need to be prepared to come up with creative solutions to solving problems. Another fundamental aspect of photorealistic materials is paying close attention to micro details. Again, always checking back with the photo reference. Creating subtle micro details is going to achieve two specific things. Firstly, there's going to be an almost tactile feel to your materials because even though the micro details might not be easily visible, especially when you're zoomed out, they still add a certain something to the material. And when they're missing, you notice that everything just looks too clean and too perfect. The second benefit of micro details is that when you zoom in on your mesh, everything is going to hold up simply because the more you zoom in, the more detail will be revealed. As well as micro details, pay attention to roughness and glossiness. Add some smudges and smears to your materials because this will help to break up the reflections. And this entire process is iterative. You're going to do more than one pass and you need to check all of your shading under different lighting conditions. And this is one of the reasons that I use the Instant Lighting Kit because it allows me to access lots of different environments very quickly and very conveniently. And so I can check my work under different lighting conditions to see how all of the materials react. So check your work carefully under different lighting conditions just to make sure that the materials are always holding up no matter what the lighting is doing. And the final step in this process is adding optical effects. And this has to be done very, very subtly. The reason this is important is because actual lenses always have slight imperfections. So in a real photograph, there's always going to be a bit of blooming around light sources and around bright highlights. And if your render is missing these subtle optical effects, it's not going to look photoreal. And you might not even know why, because it's just something that we're used to seeing in photographs. And if it's not there, your render looks like a render, not like a photograph. So take the guesswork out of photorealism with this framework that I outline in my new course, Secrets of Photorealism in Blender.